Good afternoon, this is Felicity, and I am speaking to you from my library. So I had planned this afternoon to do a little video on what I'm reading, and I have one right here. I'm reading The Lost Gutenberg by Margaret Leslie Davis, and it's absolutely delightful and really quite interesting. It's got lots of little um, historical snippets of the travels of this book, which is called number 45, Gutenberg number 45, uh, from its inception when it was printed to wh where it is now. Um, so I was going to talk about this book, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a major haul unboxing, in a manner of speaking. I took them out of the box because this afternoon I went to my favorite antiquarian bookseller. That's uh, Mark Funk bookseller in um, Mill Valley. And I got some books. I was going to get one. I got some books I'm going to show you because I'm going to, maybe he wraps them all up. Look at this. He wraps them all up like this. Oh, every single one in tissue paper. So I'm going to have a, a post unboxing unboxing. Um, and just to show you, this is a real class. I, I got some bookmarks. They're going to be going in the barrel, the, the, the bowl of bookmarks. And you know it's a class act when the pencils that he gives out are black wing. Like, oh, wow, this is real. Anyway, I've got, I've got pencils. I've got bookmarks. I'm ready to roll. So let's see what's in them. I don't know. I've got quite a few. This may take a while. So book number one. There are big books. There are small books. I went there for one book, and I did get that book, but I got many others too. So, oh, yeah. So here we go. This is a... Uh, this is a poem by Thackeray, and uh, um, I thought, okay, a poem by Thackeray, whatever, I'm sure I have it in something. But this one has illustrations from luminaries, such as Howard Pyle. So there's, there's every single page of the poem, practically, is illustrated by somebody or other. They're all different. And uh, the, poem is, the poem is kind of a thing, but uh, you open it up and, oh my goodness, why yes? So I said... I also believe I want this book. I'm not going to open it too far because these are all antiquarian books. This is um, this is book number one. So this is the Chronicle of the Drum. It actually looks like it'll be a fun read, but it'll be more fun to look at the pictures. And of course, it is a yeah. Let's see, Charles Scribner and Son, 1882. They all come with these really wonderful little tags that say that say what they are. That's what proper booksellers do. And um, it does have a. Uh, this is the front, the frontest pieces, but is the one by, is the one by uh, Pyle. And uh, yeah, we all know Howard Pyle, the phenomenal, phenomenal artist. Let's probably let that one go away. And um, and there it is, New York's Charles Scribner's Sons, 1882. <laughs> Book number one. This was not the one that I went there for. I'll tell you when I get to that one. Actually, you'll probably know because I'll be starting to hyperventilate. Okay. And oh, some are small and heavy, and some are heavy and heavy. Here's another one. Okay, oh, package number two. What's in package number two? Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so this was uh, <laughs> all right. I got a couple of kind of interesting ones that I don't normally get. This one, okay, and you can see it's uh, oh, it's got a nice little cover here. This is before the mast in the clippers, and I ended up getting this because this is um. This is an interesting. This is an interesting book about a particular class of books. This is um, this, the Clipper ships. Um, Gosnell never heard of him. It has. Uh, it does not have. Pic it has a couple of illustrations, but mostly what it has is a. A diary. This book's in wonderful condition. I believe this one is um, actually a small press book, which was the other category of things I got. Some that were definitely first edition of the first time it was published, but I got a whole series of, these are lovely. Um, this one is the Derrydale Press uh, in New York, and I am beginning to appreciate more and more the, um, the small press books because they really care about the printing process, they care about the product, so proofreading, the paper, the ink, the printing is all glorious. So this was um, this was before the mast and the clippers, composed in large part of the diaries of Charles A. Abbey, kept while at sea in the years 1856 to 1860. I got a couple more like that too. So we will have a couple more of the of the. Man, I got a little of everything. This is great. Okay, so here goes package number three, and this one. 
Um, well, let's see what we have here. Okay. So this one is boxed. How beautiful is that? This one is the California Diary of, pa of Faxton Dean um, Atherton. And I got actually more than I was not, I'm not that into local history, but I guess I'm going to be because the ones I saw uh, there were really nice and really interesting. And they are, well, they're my history. Anyway, this is <laughs> it's a really beautiful cover. Uh, there's a little insignia there and you can see the same one is on the, is on the spine. Uh, this one is already pre mylard It's kind of handy. <laughs> it's going to be wanted. Um, so this guy here is um, printed by um, California Historical Society. So this is the California Diary of Faxton Dean Atherton. Atherton that we have a town, streets, all kinds of things named after here in the, here in the, in the Bay Area. Um, edited with an introduction by Adois B. Nunes and 1964 was when this particular uh, book was published. Um, it, uh, it, has, it has maps. <laughs> it has maps and charts and other interesting ephemera um, in there. Actually, it has, it has facsimiles of various interesting documents so it's got oh it's got fold outs we like fold outs fold outs are awesome so this is going to be i most of these i've never even heard of i have no idea this is going to be so much amazing reading this is nothing what i expected i'm still not at the book that i did so this <laughs> sorry i get there so this is uh this was these are all unexpected finds in the yeah, felicity and book stars um apparently uh, i have a new title i am the bookseller's best friend I was told that today. <laughs> I guess I am. All right. So that was book number three. All right. So moving right along, we have just a little stack here. I'm not quite ready for those ones yet. And in, oh yeah, <laughs> this one was, I almost just left after I found this one. So this one is number four. And this is, this is also a box set. And I say, well, what could it be? This one is glorious. This one is called Mr. Gladstone's Washi, and it is a book about paper. This one is a small press book from, um, uh, looks like, I think this one was from, um, I'll get there, let me get there, Bird and Bull Press, which is going to be my new favorite. Bull, Bird and Bull Press, Newton, Pennsylvania. This one was published in 1984, and it is the most beautiful thing I've seen since the last book I got. So this one is a, this one is a, a study, a survey of paper, and this particular one being that it's a small press is that some of the paper samples of the different papers that are talked about in this book are included, are bound into the book, as well as the extra super bonus at the back. This one, I think this was a, this was the clincher for me. So this little this little uh, ensemble here. Uh, has a little pocket, and in it are reproductions of all the different stages in Japanese paper making. This is, so I'll pick one, I actually saw some um, reproductions of this, or, or I should say uh, uh, copies of this in the wonderful book on paper by Bazbane that I've been reading. Uh, but uh, let's see, here's, oh, here they are, hanging, hanging the paper up. So there's a whole set of these, and this comes with the book in the box. This is just glorious. So there's on the, on the back of the of the back of the binder, you can see. So they they've got their their publication information. I saw that, and then I saw that he had a couple more by this particular um, by this particular um, publishing small press publishing company, and I got others. <laughs> This is still not the one that I went there for, but uh, this was where I started my uh, walk down the primrose path of, oh, well, maybe I'll get that book too. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one's going to be tricky getting, I'm going to be careful, but this is has a, it's a pretty snug, um, this is a pretty snug um, cover, but uh, it will actually keep the, the book very well protected, so I want to make sure that it goes back in its little slipcase. Yeah, let's see, there we go. Okay, so this is Mr. Gladstone's Washi. Very, very glad I saw that. Very happy to have that. That is going to be a fantastic addition. All right, and here we have book number five. All wrapped in tissue paper. 
Now this guy here, this was also, he had a few things out ready for me to, to take a look at. This is Essays in Celebration of the 250th Anniversary of the House of Longman Publishing. Um, and it is a, um, it is a survey. It is, uh, as it says, so it has a, um, it has a lot of articles. It has some pictures. It has, um, yeah, it's got a little kind of maps, but not fold out maps or anything like that. Um, it's got a lot of pictures. This one is, this one came from somebody's library. Yes, it's not a brand new book, but it's perfect. All right, this one was published by Longman, by the, by the company that actually, by the publishing company that it is. And this is the title page, Essays in the History of Publishing in Celebration of the 250th Anniversary. There you go. Edited by Asa Briggs, or Asa Briggs probably. Um, this was published or printed, this was distributed in 1974. And um, there are articles such as At the Sign of the Ship, Copyright and Society, and each one of these is written, since this is a celebration, not a festival, since it's 250 years. Um, Edinburgh Review, Disraeli's Endymion, The View from Badminton, Latin for Yesterday. These are fascinating titles for books. The Paperback Revolution, Beyond the Book, Tracks, Rewards, and Fairies. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting one. Education and Publishing in Transition and Planning for Change. So this is um, this is old news now, but it's interesting old news since, after all, the company's been around since 1724 pretty good going all right so i am going to so here comes the next one <laughs> all right so here goes book book number next i've run out of fingers <laughs> book number next all right this is oh this is two books Oopsies. <laughs> okay so this one is oh yeah okay so this one was my one exception to the i'm not going to get any books and languages that i have no intention of learning so yeah, French is not one of my languages, but this is a music book, and it is exquisite. Uh, it was obviously loved a little bit by the um, by the um, by the family that had it um, back in the when. This was published in I gotta say early 1900s or um, late 1800s because it is it's not actually marked it has all of our favorite songs and this is the have to be really careful because it is starting to kind of come apart so there's a beautiful little frontispiece and then oh, there's a little orchestra here so um yeah it's in french but uh you know hey listen who doesn't know how to sing claire de lune it's in here it's the first song in the book i'm going to actually show you why i suddenly and immediately fell in love with it because of course i, I am you know music is what i do and got the songs music is universal i don't need to be able to speak french to be able to understand how to play this or sing this and the pictures are all every single one of them as exquisite as these and there you go au claire de la lune we already know that one yeah, so this one is vie chanson errante pour les enfants and it is just lovely and yeah that's the only book in french that i got today <laughs> okay still not the one i went in for You'll see. Okay, next we have book next. <laughs> I love that he wrapped them up. It's almost like, okay, I know because I bought them, but it's like Christmas because I get to unwrap them all again. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, this is another one of the um, of the Bird and Bull books. And this one you can hardly see here. This is uh, called, it's called Bird and Bull pepper pot. I may actually read a little of the intro, intro to this because this is hilarious. Okay, it is it is hilarious. So um, I'm not showing any of those little cards because they all have press tags on it and I don't actually need to have anybody know. <laughs> okay, and there, is the there is the title page. Bird and Bull Press, North, Hills, North Hill, Pennsylvania. So I'm going to get this up close because this is pretty funny. Pepper pot. Ingredients? Choice bits of uncommon paper making, publishing, and printing history simmered in a tasty broth of poetry, current events, and amusing anecdotes, lightly seasoned with a dash of obscenity, and with selected portions of fresh tripe added, as in the old original recipe. Prepared with a zestful variety of typefaces and served by Henry Morris. 
Yeah, so obviously we want to know, so eh, what would those slightly seasonings be, pray tell? The Adventures of a Boy Printer to Air as Human, William Nash of St. Paul's Cray, Bovine again, so what more can a publisher do? These are the, these are the chapter tags. This was published in 1977. Uh, the paper is, uh, it is gorgeous. It is, this is just, this is just fabulous. Um, it is, um, it is a laid paper. This will last forever. Um, this is the little forward actually does mention <laughs> um, many areas have their special dishes and recipes which are claimed by the native to be of strictly local origin. Our Philadelphia pepper pot is such a dish and according to legend which was it was made by collecting odd bits of food during the week in a pot which was kept at the back of a stove. There you go pepper pot. <laughs> All right that was that was super fun that was uh of the books that I wasn't planning to get, that was kind of the second favorite of mine on the list. Now I'm working my way through these size, I'm doing this by size, because <laughs> I'm, I'm stacking them all back there. Excuse me, like push them out of the way because ah, uh, there's going to be more. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, okay, so next round two here, um, snack wise. So this is the next book, and we have here. Um, <laughs> okay, the log of Apollo, and um, this is another one of the. Um, this is another one of the uh, um, uh, ship journeying um, journeying books, and this is a, there's a little there's a little lovely little insert that kind of gives you a little kind of a pre a preview a pre see of what's going on in this. Um, this was. Uh, from, the original is from 1849. This is the Book Club of California, which up until now I had never heard of. This one also has a, <laughs> it has a little ex libris, which is wonderful because it was, it's like one of these days I'm going to have my own and I'll be adding it to all my favorite books too also. Okay, so um, this was published in 18, sorry, 1986 is the 1849 Joseph Perkins Beaches Journal of the Voyage of the Ship Apollo from New York to San Francisco. And it is, there's some, there's some facsimile pages and this is a, this is a diary. Um, so, well, diary, blog, the, the same, the same basic format. So I thought this would be a really interesting thing to add to my collection of somewhat nautical books that I bought this time around. <laughs> We'll see. All right, yeah, I better move along here because where is the time going? I still have, but wait, there's more. <laughs> okay, the next one here on the stack is, okay. All right, Vermont, eat your heart out. The Covered Bridges of California. Of course, don't eat your heart out because I doubt any of them are still around. This is the University, University of California Press publication. And I saw that and I said, I'm pretty sure I need that. Look at that. So this is by, um, this was uh, by S. Griswold Morley, Morley as in Christopher Morley, but not he. And um, this one has tons of pictures and yeah, it looks kind of like the, it looks kind of like the covered bridges that we've seen before. And of course, as I go through this, I'm going to have to look them up and see if any of them are actually still standing because I don't know. Maybe there are, and I've just never been on roads small enough. But there you go. California's got covered bridges, and I am going to find out about that. So this is Covered Bridges of California, and it is a pretty clean edition. It is not ex libris. It, however, it, it was. Um, it is definitely secondhand. It's just, pages are okay. 1938 is when this was published. So yeah, this is pretty old news. Pretty fun one to look at. All right, so that was those big ones. And now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start a medium size. Yep, okay, so medium size comes next. <laughs> okay, and we are, all right. This, this is a two part, I'm not worth the second part of it. On the Ease of the World by Reginald Ferrer. This is volume two. And uh, this is, I almost didn't get this because I am not sure just how much I want to read, but it is a travel log, and it is a travel log of um, a person I don't know who yet. Right, but this is this is Mr. Ferrer, uh, who's traveling in China. It's two volumes of it. It's uh, it's quite um, extensive, and it was written in 1926. So there is a lot of time between then and now, and I expect to find some things that are jarring, and maybe other things that aren't. So this was published in London. 
Um, here is uh, here is the title page, 1926. A lot of, as I say, water under the bridge since then. Um, but this looked interesting, so I ended up getting it, and the, uh, the price was right. Kind of. Well, there was a lot of books, what can I say? <laughs> So this will be this will this will this will be really interesting. So there's going to be another one that's this that I'll say ah that's volume one of that of that um, that series. It's floating around here somewhere. Let me see if this is it. And yeah, this is it. So this is uh, on the ease of the world, volume one by Farrar, and that is uh, that is the um, that is the tag. So. Um, These kind of actually has kind of nice pictures. They are uh, not tipped in. They're actually bound in. So that was actually kind of a nice publication. So they're like little illustrations like this. It's photography. And yeah, 1926. That's what you get. All right. There we go. That is on the eaves of the world. And this one. <laughs> this is a I don't know how this is going to go. This is sort of a speculation. This is called the Vengro by George, by George Borrow, and I thought, what? So I had a look at it. Uh, it's nice. It's got it's uh, it's got a nice uh, it's a nice slipcase, still in really good shape, and um, so I had a look at it and I had a little bit of a read and decided that this one was going to be interesting. It's also nicely printed. Uh, I'll be finding out about a lot of authors that I never heard of before. It's got a nice. Uh, so here we go. Introduction by Hugh Walpole. Um, Lavengro. So this is the scholar, the gypsy, the priest with an introduction by Hugh Walpole. So I'm going to find out about Lavengro. And um, what, did I, what did I see from my wanderings through? Um, there is, uh, yes, it looks like it might almost be a memoir, might almost be, or it might almost be just like a, a secondhand memoir. Or it might be a fantasy. I will be finding out uh, eventually. <laughs> As you can see there's really quite a few books. I will count them for you when I am done. There are a lot. Uh, we are still not at the book which I went there originally to get, but it's coming. It's and another size. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. Uh, this is <laughs> this is it. Unboxing off off the. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I have been thinking about this guy for quite a while since I saw it at his shop, and um, and I restrained, I refrained from getting it last time for a variety of reasons. But this is this is Horace, bound in vellum and published in 1589. So my other Samuel Foster has been ousted as the earliest book that I have. This is now it. Um, it has actually 18. It has a. It has two title pages, and one of them is 18. Sorry, 1585. So that is probably what we're talking about here. This is clearly pre-owned. It has. The pages are in reasonably good condition. Here is the. Here is the. Here is the first title page. Um, it is. The other reason that I kind of abstained from it last time is yes. It's in Latin. There is no English. It's uh, the, the Foster was kind of kind of cool because it had Latin on one side and English on the other. This is 100% Latin, and in addition, it has. So in the big print, you can see this is actually uh, this, there's a couple of different works. I think it's got the satires and the odes. But then underneath, just in case you weren't sure what was going on, because of course Horace was long dead. He's an ancient you know ancient Roman poet. There is a paraphrase. In Latin, <laughs> oh boy, am I going to have fun with this? This is the book that I went there to get, and um, now that itch, that massive itch, has been scratched, and I have no excuse. Um, I will have to, I will have to read it in Latin, and that is all there is to it. <laughs> I have some pictures. It is, um, it is, uh, it is just a really beautiful book. Um, this was. Um, so the second title page might be a little bit easier to get out. Um, this is, well, I'm not sure if it's easier or not to get at, but it is, um, it is after all the hoo-ha in the beginning before we actually get into the horse proper. And it's avoiding me right now, so that's fine. 
um, Verona. Oh, it's right behind the first one. Go figure. And there you go. Title plate number two. So this was published in Verona. Uh, a uh, disciple of Hieronymus, of Hieronymus in, um, in 1589. And I will say there's another book I didn't get, but I finally held my first Aldean. It was one of the pocket Aldeans and it was in terrible condition. But that is the first time I've ever held in my hands a book that was published by by Aldus Minutius. I think it might have been after he died because it was, um, it, I, he died in, I want to say mid 15, maybe maybe late 1500, uh, 1500s, but, um, uh, but his company actually went on for a while longer before it folded up. Uh, so I, I did hold one of those in my hands. That was really, really also pretty exciting. It was not in very good condition. It was not in very good condition. It had been handled a lot, and, and it was supposed to be the pocket pocket edition. And it was literally it was fat. It was fat, but it was it was a pocket edition. It was smaller than our standard um, than our standard um, paperback. So you could put it in a voluminous pocket along with <laughs> whatever else you had in your pocket. And uh, I think a lot of that actually kind of leaked into the book because it was, um, or either that or they were reading it out in the rain, whatever. Um, I, I got a look at it. It was, that was pretty cool. Not something that I can get, but very cool. All right. Horace. Horace. Odes and Satires. Um, 1589. I might have a few more things in that one later, but that one is, that one was my prize today. <laughs> All right. So moving along here, I am moving from tallest or biggest to smallest because it just makes it easier to stack. And let's see what we got here. And they're all wrapped up. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's like Christmas. It is so, that, is, that is really so wonderful. There we go. More, 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 more. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, um... This was that uh, this was another one of the um, this was another one of the uh, of the small press books, beautifully bound, and I think this is another one of those bell, um, one of the uh, one of the the the, the burden bell bull um, printings. Yeah, burden bull press. Um, and this one I almost thought, I don't know. So then I looked at then I finally got around to look at the title page when I said, well, who printed it? This is Lewis Herman. Kinder Kinder and Fine Book Binding in America, a chapter in the history of the Roycroft shop. Now, I actually have a set, not as beautiful as this, but I have a set that uh, was my grandfather's of the, the Little Journeys. Um, and I now know that is definitely a, a, a later publication because Mark, um, uh, the, the bookseller, he had an, er, the first edition of the, the Little Journeys, which was the great Italian painters bound in leather, a very, very different kind of publication and really quite beautiful. Um, so, but the paper, the paper is still, still, still great. And the paper in my one is, is pretty great. Uh, however, uh, yeah, the same thing. So this one has a little, has a little pricey at the beginning of it. Um, Bird and Bull Press, looking forward to maybe even finding some more of those. Um, and this one has, of course, it opens right up to the picture of Albert Hubbard, who was the Roycroft dude. And he was also, okay, well, what a character. Anyway, this should make very interesting reading. And I have a section that it's going to go with because it's going to go with my collection of uh, the Roycroft, which is the Roycroft publication, which is the only one I have. It's pretty cool. All right. So this is, um, this is, but it's about book binding. Uh, I did get a number of things by small presses that were on the art of book making. There's a few more to come. Just you wait. So then I also got... I think this is the one here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the one. All right. So this one is first edition. This is a book about Rosenbach, the great, the great Philadelphia book uh, book man. They called him. They called him uh, the doctor. So. Uh, he was one of the great, the Napoleon, because the world known as the Napoleon of the auction room. So he was one of the great book dealers um, of last century. Um, and uh, it has some, uh, it's, it's not, I mean, it's actually been, it's, I think it's been looked at and read. Um, this is on the book trade. 
fascinating reading. I mean, fascinating. So, I mean, I've gotten into it with Basbane and with um, uh, a number of other uh, book book uh, book guys. So, this is going to be a <laughs> this is going to be a really, really, really interesting read and interesting addition to it. So, this is Rosenbach, a biography. Don't have that many biographies, but clearly, I need to start. So, here we go. Edwin Wolfe with John Fleming, and this is the World Publishing Company, so not a fancy publishing company, but uh, did a very respectable job. This particular one is a first edition. Well, of course, I was at an antiquarian bookstore. Um, so there you go. This is Rosenbach, and um, just makes me want all the more to go and visit the wonderful um, museum, which is a house um, on two floors, and on the third floor is the Rosenbach Library, which is... Uh, whenever I'm in Philadelphia, I visit the Rosenbach house. It's a thing. Okay, I am finally making my way down to the medium to small size books. <laughs> but wait, there's more. And this little guy here, eh, this one is here. Oh, right, so I got two. They're 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 not they're not the, they're not part of this they're not the same, but they are kind of part of a series. And these are my last these are my other two nautical books that I got. Ha! Look at that. So, Filings from an Old Saw and a Navy Surgeon in California. And these are both books about um, the Marine, the Marine, um, it's not the Navy, uh, but uh, Marine Industry. Oh, I guess I'll find out because I haven't actually read them yet. Um, in California. So, specifically California. And yeah, these beautiful pictures of ships on the front because, after all, we are talking about, um, we are talking about, uh, just gonna do this this way. There we go. <laughs> um, we are talking about uh, um, th things to do with marine, with uh, mariners and and ships. Uh, this this one is um, this one is uh, John Howell Publisher. This looks like a this is San Francisco. Uh, and this is oh thank you it's in um, it's in Roman numerals so I'll, I'll be better at that. Um, this is 19, um, 1961, I guess. There we go. So there is um, there is the title page to that. Filings from an old saw. <laughs> Very funny. So these are um, so this is this is reminiscences. Um, Reminiscences. I don't think it's memoirs. I think it's uh, it's uh, third person. There's no I in here, but there is an I telling it. Um, so these both are reminiscences of. So some of it may be uh, marine because, after all, what there's no there was no real industry in that journal of Mar Marius Duval. So there's going to be various things in here. This is actually going to be really interesting reading. And they're both in such nice condition. I'll just make sure this I can, I can look at everything to do with this. Oh, there was a series. So there was um, this one. They're they're all um, they're all naval things. So Navy Surgeon in California um, is this one. Navy Surgeon. I got filings from an old saw. And there's apparently the U.S. Navy in old California, and I didn't get that one because he didn't have it. I didn't know it existed. In preparation. Well, there you go. <laughs> 1961 and 1962. All right. So. Then we have okay. This is a pretty little thing. This is this is nothing really special, but um, this is Mendelssohn's letters, and um, I just been looking at an amazing book, which was a uh, I think it was a it was a um, 17th century book of uh, travels, and it was a Mendelssohn or Men Mendelssohn or not Mendelssohn. And it was full of maps, and it was the travels in um, what they then called Arabia, um, in parts east. Uh, this is our Mendelssohn, as in um, Felix Bartholdi, and it's his letters. And I thought, well, why not? What a beautiful thing to own. I don't have it. I've never read them, and it is, it is, it's got, it's got obviously little bits of everything in it. Um, but this is, uh, this is Mendelssohn's own letters. So I'm sure that they've been cleaned up a little bit so that you could, he wouldn't have written music looking like that. Um, but this is, uh, there's a title page there. Letters from Italy and Switzerland. And um, 
translated from the German. So yeah, uh, it was uh, it's a Lady Wallace. So we'll find out. But I mean, my German is okay, but not that great. We'll see. So that is Letters of Mendelssohn. Pretty happy to have this one. Uh, this will be fun, and it will get me back. It will get me the humor for some uh, some musical things. I got a couple of musical things. One of them super fun. This is 1862 when this was published by Longman Green and Roberts. Same one we just saw earlier. Hey, 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 how about that? Okay. Um, and, but wait, there's more. <laughs> okay, this one, uh, this one's getting a little bit worn out. Uh, this one classifies as an absurdity. I could not resist myself. It's called Lily's Astrology Zadkiel. Oh, yeah. Um, the spine is getting, the spine is getting pretty, uh, pretty worn. I may actually take it to my, um, I may take it to my, uh, restorer. She does a, she does a lot of things like that. I'm kind of thinking that would be a good idea. Ooh, 1887 published. There it is. An Introduction to Astrology by William Lilly. Grammar of Astrology, Tables for Calculating Nativities by Zadkiel. Oh yeah, so this is going to be, um, <laughs> this is going to be great. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'll be having fun. Well, I, I always have fun. That doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. This one, this one is going to be a reference book. This is going to probably stay out. This is the... ABC for Book Collectors by John Carter. This is a fairly early publication. In fact, I believe that uh, this is a first edition. This is this is it here. I believe that this, uh, he said that this was, uh, he thinks this is the first edition. It probably is, if he says it is. And uh, printed in England, printer's imprint. This is Alfred Knopf, and it, uh, 1952. So this is like my great music uh, dictionaries is somebody says something you read something in a in, in, in a in a description of a book and you say well what on earth so what are beveled edges and you look it up beveled edges or beveled boards a style of binding in which the edges of the boards usually extra thick boards have been beveled i.e cut to an oblique or slanting angle before being covered so this is the language that you're going to see um, in discussions by professionals and some non-professionals and amateurs about the book business. Ha! Very cool. Binders, cloth, extended, ex libris, extra, frame, frontispiece, form, fount or font, full, Jansenist, issue mongers. Issue mongers! Oh yeah! <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, this is going to be, I'm actually probably just going to read this just like I read the history of printing. That was brilliant. Rubric. Actually, I do know, but that's the kind of thing where you'd say, well, what is a rubric? What do you mean rubric? A rubric is a heading to a chapter or a section written or printed in red uh, with a specialized meaning in liturgical books. Rubricated, as used in descriptions of manuscripts or early printed books, generally means that initial capitals for paragraphs have also been painted in red. So there you go. I'm going to become an expert. I want the apples. <laughs> ABC for Book Collectors by John Carter. <laughs> that was came highly recommended. All right. I'm now going to do a small to small, medium to small. <laughs> okay. And this one, I think, I can't decide if this is going to be an oddity or not. This is evolution and its relation to religious thought by LeConte. I have no clue. It looked, first it looked like it was going to be weird and I didn't want it. And then I looked at it and it's actually kind of interesting. It is, um, it is a, um, it's, it's got some science in it. This was published in, um, this was published in, uh, Reverend so-and-so had it, um, 1888 by D. Appleton and Company. This is the, this is the title page, and what I, what I kind of picked up in the little snippets as I was looking through the, as I was looking through the book was that this is, um, this is somebody who is on the science side, and he is trying to explain 
evolution or um, progress of an evolution, evolutionary sort to or religious people like ministers or priests or just religious people like what does this mean to you um, and I'm I'm thinking it should be interesting it, it it's definitely I, I don't know I don't know which way it's going to go it may turn out to be an oddity but it looked like in any case it would be interesting I don't think anybody's actually read this one uh, somebody was given to somebody but <laughs> I don't know okay so there we go that is that is um, evolution and its relation to religious thought so we shall find out about that. All right, we shall find out about that indeed. All right, here we go. Here's another one. Oops, still need one more, one more big one. Here we go. Okay, so this is, we're, we're actually coming down to the end of the pile. <laughs> yes, what I'm reading now is this. Okay, oh, look at that. I get a really cute little thing. This was, this was not a, a super fancy thing, but um, Ralph Waldo well, Emerson, don't really have anything by him. This is a really pretty, pretty book on slip cover. And I decided that after I looked inside that it was really clean. And I decided I needed it because it's, it's actually pretty, it's pretty nice looking. So there we go. Essays and poems. This is Collins, uh, London, Glasgow. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, selected and arranged by Maine, and an intro by somebody I never heard of. So this is this is this little book. And these are these wonderful pocket books. It's actually got a leather I don't know if it's leather or leatherette but it's a sort of a soft flexible cover which is which is really which is really nice and um, we have we're going to have some I think some of the um, standard essays here um, well, it doesn't it's not really it's, it's just it's it's a very compact book so we've got um, uh, oh, turn the page you um, this edition was printed in 1954, um, and it is uh, the first series of essays, second series, representative men, English traits, and poems. It's got a little bit of everything in it, and it's got a little cover. Oh, this is kind of cute. Uh, I thought that would be fun, something I can sit in my poetry corner or some other corner. I have so many. <laughs> and read. All right. There you go. Really pretty, pretty, pretty little, little volume. Uh, there may be, I don't think I have any, because otherwise I would say, yeah, something not so nice is going to go out, but <laughs> this is all very new to my library. All right, and here's another one. Okay, so here we go. This is, uh, let's see. Bunyan's Holy War, and I'm... Um, it's, uh, I looked at it and I thought, I, I actually want this. I, I'm kind of, I like John Bunyan. He's, he's, a, he's kind of this pretty interesting character. Uh, he is an individualist. There's a lot of stuff going on. And of course, his Pilgrim's Progress, we know very well. And I have a couple of editions of that. Um, the one thing, the only reason that I almost didn't get this was because the condition is not very good. On the other hand, I've never even heard of it, so I shall be very careful because the paper is uh, the paper is dying. Um, this one is um, this one was published in 1812 in Baltimore, and it looked like it was just judging by the paper, it looks like it was something that was maybe pu published for the not mass market, but for the um, for the slightly less well healed uh, because it's. Um, because the paper is it's been handled quite a bit and the paper is really starting to deteriorate still john bunyan the holy war and um, i'm i've read pilgrim's progress and the children's the 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 the, 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 the simplified version so uh and he does the same thing with these little with these little um, sort of like a dramas then mr loath to stop sir my master has said have said that he will be content that you shall be the nominal titular lord of all if he shall possess but a part so he's doing that so bunyan is still doing his um his uh, sort of like the passion play design anyway uh pity about the condition but uh, probably wouldn't have been able to afford it uh if it were in um nicer shape so there you go yeah, it's kind of interesting oh, interesting little guy okay so then i've got yeah, a couple more <laughs> she said she's, she should see this giant stack behind me oh boy um okay this one is eh, this this one may end up by being a curiosity 
Um, this one is entitled Zimmerman. And it, oh, sorry, no, this is by Zimmerman. And <laughs> there you go. I forgot that it's going to be a curiosity. Solitude considered with respect to its influence upon the mind and the heart. And, uh, or maybe it'll be serious, um, but it was published a long time ago. This was from 1806. And uh, there's some dude named Zimmerman who wrote it. Olic Counselor. That's kind of why I thought maybe this was going to be something a little bit uh, a little bit strange and physician to his britannic majesty at hanover translated from the french of monsieur merci Mercier. so uh this is um this is the printing on this is a paper is a little bit better it's also been handled a lot so maybe this was more interesting than i think it's going to be uh, the title of this work will perhaps give some alarm to delicate ears. The word solitude may inspire melancholy and unfavorable ideas. It is, however, only necessary to read a few pages to be undeceived. There you go. So there you go. Um, all right, now I've got here got a giant pile of tissue papers. If I iron it out, I'll be able to use it again. It's actually pretty good stuff. Right, so here's a little guy here. This one is, what did I get here? <laughs> um, yeah, what did I get here? <laughs> no, there's nothing on the front. It's got a little ex libris, it's kind of cute. Oh, yeah. There we go. Ooh, don't break it. It's already falling apart. Antique, Antiquates Curiosi, the etymology of old sayings and proverbs. Um, this is actually pretty funny. But then you kind of look it up and you see, you say, well, I don't know. Okay, what about, what about this? Hobson's Choice, this or none. And it says it's like our, you know, our, um, our urban, um, urban legend or uh, is this real or is this a, is this a, is this a fake saying? Um, so this is just a very, very early. This is 1818. And this person has collected together a bunch of different phrases and, um, and uh, and words and um, ideas and uh, says where they came from. Dogwell Court White Friars, why so called? Origins origin of pancakes at Shrovetide. <laughs> Tawdry, topsy turvy, Devil's House, Candlemas. Some of these may be sneaking into a maybe a video or two. Who knows? Maybe there'll be other videos because I am seeing a giant awesome stack books. This was actually the the hall beyond halls, the uber hall. It's, <laughs> it is, oh, it was so much fun. I can't believe. Yeah, I am, I am, I am, I am actually really, I'm actually really happy. <laughs> really happy. Okay, so here's another, here's another. <laughs> Jacobite minstrelsy. Jacobite minstrelsy. So this guy is actually it's a little, like a little pocket reference, and these are the words to songs that uh, would have been known. And uh, I think the first one I had turned to was uh, uh, Charlie's. Charlie's head is off now. <laughs> so uh, wow, um, and it's uh, the words, and it's kind of from all over England. So there's uh, there's some vernacular there, uh, and. Um, and uh, and it's uh, and it's the words that would have been the words that would have been been heard in the songs. Let's see if I can find the one that that kind of popped out at me. And I went, oh yeah, I think I need this one. <laughs> um, be valiant still, the wigs. Be valiant still. Is that the one? I don't know where it is. Um, uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for a couple and I'll be reading them back. I'll be reading them back. There's a lot of a lot of Scottish ones in here. I'll have to practice my fake Scottish accent. It's gonna be great. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that was some Jacobite minstrelsy. And this does have some kind of a publication date on it. Let's just see. Here we go. Notes illustrative of the text. Um, and it, it says that this is historical details and also historical details in relation to the House of Stuart from 1640 to 1784. It was published in Glasgow for Richard Griffin and Co. And we were looking at 1,500, 6, 7, 18, 29. Yes, I have to come to that on my hand. So this is the, um, this is the, this is the, this is the wrong one here. This is the one I need to move my fingers on. Sorry about that. 
Um, this is the title page for Jacobite Minstrelsy. Um, curious indeed. Okay, I have two more and so nearly there. This one was, who is this one? This one. Um, which was this one? I'm looking at the uh, looking at the spine, and it says "Exiles of Siberia." But I thought this was kind of I don't know if this going to be a thing or not. Uh, it's very, very, very heavily used. It was actually a session from a library. This was published in 1811. Elizabeth or the Exiles of Siberia: A Tale Founded Upon Facts from the French of Madame uh, Cotin. Uh, printed in Philadelphia by Ann Cochran, by Ann Cochran for Matthew Carey. There's going to be some publisher things I'm going to be looking at because there's a whole bunch of new people I never heard of. It says, so the anecdote upon which this history is founded is taken from truth. No imagination could form actions so heroic, sentiments so noble, the heart alone could inspire them. And um, uh, this one, um, this one is a, it's, it's, it's going to be probably so it's not it's not humorous but it's something like that a thinly disguised memoir thinly disguised biography we shall see the book is not in amazing condition it's got a lot of it's got a lot of foxing and it's got um it's got some uh, spots that uh, that don't look like foxing look like something else but uh, uh but hopefully hopefully it will be it will hold it will hold up anyway so this is um this is that one and then there's one more little book which I saw that and then the books that I said really what do you want that for because it's a book on music look at this it's wonderful piano forte primer containing the rudiments of music I have never seen one this old calculated either for private tuition or teaching in class and there was some really telling little snippets from this that I thought were hilarious. They weren't intentionally hilarious. Um, they were, <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's see. It, so it's, it talks about um, the usual things you expect. Um, it talks about, yeah, for kids, huh? Keys, staff, length of note, time, uh, manner of playing, sharps and flats, common characters, modes of expression, uh, intervals, signature, formation of the scale, various characters, and common terms. Uh, this one, what is it? The first thing I turned to was, oh, yes. The school is to be divided. The school to be divided into classes by the master. One whole class to attend at a time with one pupil from the class next above as teacher. Different educational spirit here too. Each pupil to be teacher in turn. The pupils not to be admitted into an upper class until they have passed regularly through and can give all the requisite examples in the lower classes pupils of talent to be removed. I was going to say, remove what? <laughs> remove to the upper class as soon as the master finds them qualified without waiting for those who are less rapid in their improvement. There you are. So I thought this is, this is going to be, this is going to be great. And look, it's just a little, it's a little primer. And yeah, actually I have four or five, just nothing quite as old as this. This is 18, what did I say? 1855. 1855. So that's the last book. I got this little tiny, uh, this little tiny, tiny snippet, and I have this huge stack of books. And I had a fantastic day. And no, I will not be starting in on the Lost Gutenberg. I will be cataloging these books and um, enjoying these instead. There you go. So I hope you all have had as fantastic a day as I have. Um, uh, and bye bye for now. Thank you for watching.